They're being weaned off mum's milk and onto fish so that means we can start doing some fantastic training with some of them but you will to see sometimes they do like to get a little bit in the way of Anya and Gina as they are doing these demonstrations so now they have made their way to the front we'll tell you about the two sea lions on the right hand side we have got Gina and on the left hand side we have got Anya now they are in fact sisters so they do like to give each other a little bit of a kiss and then they realise there's lots of people watching, they do get a little bit embarrassed. So ladies and gentlemen, whenever possible and you see this, can we give them a huge round of applause because they are going to do an incredible job for us today. Now we're going to start by talking to you about a big mistake and we hear it all the time as we're walking around the zoo and it's that Annie and Gina are seals. Yeah, I'm sorry, you're not seals, are you? They're actually sea lions. So we're going to show you just a few differences between the two. And we're going to start off with just a small difference. So you guys will be able to see on the side of Gina's head, she's got this small flap of skin. Now this is in fact an external earlobe. So just like we have ears on the outside of our body, the sea lions do as well. And a seal would just have a small hole or a small slit on the side of their head. But that's quite a little difference, you guys at the back might not be able to see. So we'll show you a bigger one and it's those amazing front flippers. Now take a good look at Jake's hand because that is roughly the size of a seal's flipper. And when you see that in comparison to our sea lions, you'll realise just the big size difference between them. So our sea lions are much, much larger, those front flippers. And this is really important for the way that they move around on the beaches. So you'll be able to see here that Gina, she actually props herself up on all four of those flippers. She's lifting that belly up off the ground. Now she can walk, she can run, she can jump, and she can even climb stairs if she wanted to. She can see that she's very graceful and very agile with the weight. <laughs> <laughs> you are exactly right, Gina. Fantastic impression. They don't have those big front flippers to be able to prop themselves up. They have to slide along on their bellies a little bit like a student. Can we give them a big, big round of applause? Okay, so we're going to talk to you a little bit next about the way that we train our sea lions here at Blackpool Zoo. And that's using something called positive reinforcement training. And this all starts with a target stick you can see in Jake's hand. Now, the sea lions, they're naturally very inquisitive animals. So what they'll do is they'll touch their noses on the end of this target stick. And when they do, they get a fish reward for doing it. Now this encourages them to repeat that behaviour again and again and we can start to do things such as move the sea lions around on the beach and uh, we can teach all the different behaviours that you can see in this demonstration. So we'll see Anya knows exactly what to do when she sees this stick. Now the sea lions, they are actually colour blind. They can't see that it's red on the end of this stick but what they can see is that it's a slightly darker shade so they know exactly where to put their nose in and we'll see that Anya is out in the wild. So to see that Jake has got four hoops in his hand, now take a really good look at our sea lions because what they're going to do is use that long muscular neck of theirs to be able to coordinate and move that head so they're able to catch all four around their neck just like that fantastic job. So this is great for out in the wild because our sea lions, they're natural predators for things such as fish. There are actually over 50 different species of fish including squid and octopus. So it's really important that our sea lions can cut through the water using that long flexible neck to be able to catch their dinner. So what we'll do is we'll send Anya down to our pool and we're going to do this behaviour once again in the water because of course that's where our sea lions will be catching their food. Now you've also been able to see Anya's got those eyes on the front of her head so she's got really good vision, she can judge depth and distance, she knows exactly wow. where those hoops are going to be in the pool, she can make sure she swam right underneath them and she's still able to catch them just like that fantastic job Anya. So this is a really important and really good look at our sea lion's whiskers. So 
afterwards, what they're doing is they're actually moving those whiskers so they can feel in which direction the ball is going. They can make sure they move their head and they can coordinate and make sure that they don't drop it. So it's really important. They're actually watching Jake when they're doing this behaviour. So they're waiting for any hand signals that they might give so they know exactly what to do with that ball. Fantastic job. Great work. So not every sea lion can do this. It does take a lot of practice to be able to do this. So some of our newer sea lions, they are training to be able to use these fantastic whiskers to be able to do it. So it does take a lot of practice. But you can see here that Anya and Gina, they're pros at it. They've been doing it for a very long time. So they are able to even trade between sisters and share that ball after all. Fantastic. Of course, they wouldn't be finding fish up on the land. They'd be finding it in the water. So we'll send both of them to get those footballs. Now if our sea lion was to lose their vision or would be hunting in murky water, they can just rely on those whiskers to be able to catch their fish they need for their dinner. So they are extremely important. You can see our sea lions come up onto their stands without ever dropping that ball up from the pool and even sharing again. As we say, they are sisters after all. Can we give them a big, big round of applause? What are you doing? Kangaroos. Kangaroos. White kangaroos. What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? There are red kangaroos. What are you doing? What are you doing? जो कंधे यार नेता पाक रहा ये पर नहीं ले पेरो कैंगरूस पर ले पेरो हाय 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 कैंगी 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 अंगो वन डे अंगो लो वाइट वन इंगे लॉट लॉट अंगो लो वाइट वन इंगे देर इस लॉट का भी ना अंगो पाले ऐसे तो कम है तो मुंह पन कैंगरू मुंह पन आता तेरी कैंगरू ने कैंगरू ओ ओ या एल यू यू Warta, warta, warta. Tia is 10 years old, she's our eldest giraffe, she's also our tallest as well, so it's a good way to spot the difference. And then in the middle we've got Evie. Now Evie, again, you can tell her apart from the other giraffes. When she was born, do you actually think she had a small injury on her tail? So she's not got any hair that's grown on her tail. So it's a good way to be able to spot her from the group. Now out in the wild, they use this tail for things such as fly spotting. So here in England we don't have that problem quite as much, so she's quite happy without it, but they do need that long hair when they are out in Africa. And the other one just up her back, kind of able to spot her, she's little Olympia, she's our youngest 
just around. She's around six years old. She's also our shortest as well. She's just combating through now. So this is Olympia right here. So we're going to tell you some a bit of information about this incredible animal. Obviously, the tallest mammal in the world. They have some amazing features that have helped them to adapt to their environment. So they are, as we say, all females. So Tia is about average height for a female giraffe. She's just over four meters tall. Now the males, we don't have any here at the zoo, but the males, they stand at just over five meters tall. And to give you a bit of perspective, that's roughly the size of a double-decker horse. So they are very extremely tall. And as we say, this does give them a fantastic advantage from eating right at the tops of the trees. So they come from Africa, that's where they live in. when they hit their necks together and that helps them to defend their territory as well as their mates. So the males, they don't have as much hair on top of their ossicones and that's because they do use them for this necking behaviour. Now moving down, you will see our giraffes, we've got extremely thick lips as well. Now these lips, they have reduced nerve endings in them, so it actually helps with the food that they eat out in Africa. They eat from a tree, we call the acacia tree, and that has thorns on them, roughly the size of your little finger. Kevin, 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 Kevin,